Hello and welcome to another technical analysis tutorial video. In this video we have a look at Bollinger Bands, how they work and how we can use them to identify entry positions when trading. Bear in mind this is never financial advice, um, this is only my own opinion, my own experience, so you always should do your own research before making any trading decisions, that's what I recommend. Um, so what I, I teach here is basically just what I have learned over time and it's not guaranteed to work but um, I have made very good experience with that. So Bollinger Bands, what are they? First of all, I'm using TradingView here, which is an application that you can use for free if you want to, um, but you can also subscribe, then you have more access to different time, um, to dip time periods and also to more indicators on your chart. But because so many people have asked, it is called TradingView. So Bollinger Bands, you can add to your chart by just looking for here on the indicator um, button here, just for Bollinger and then you can find the Bollinger Bands here. So I have already activated them. I'm using the default settings here. We can have a look. These are the settings. Length is 20 and the standard deviation is 2. So the Bollinger, Bollinger Bands be, um, consist of a moving average here which is running pretty much in the middle of the price action plus two lines at the lower side of the price and at the upper side of the price surrounding the moving average. These are two standard deviations from the moving average. So they represent the volatility in the market. And when the price hits the lower end, um, something, you know, the, the price or the security, or in this case, the cryptocurrency is considered oversold. And when it hits the upper end, it is considered overbought. Now, the way I use the Bollinger Bands, and to be honest, there are various strategies, different ways, um, and it would be too much to put them all into one video, but because this is still the beginning of this new channel and we want to take a, uh, take a step by step approach. But what has worked for me in the past is first of all on a higher time frame. So first of all, I'm on the four hour time frame here. Um, this is if this is, for example, the time frame I want to trade in, then I would use the higher time frame to identify if we are actually in an uptrend or a downtrend. The reason for that is I only want to trade Bollinger Bands in the direction of the trend. That means if we're in an uptrend, which we currently are, this is the 200 day moving average that is from the daily time frame. Yeah, so the next higher time frame just shows me that we are in an uptrend. Um, and I want then to find entry point entry points at the lower end of the uh, at the lower side of the Bollinger Bands because then I can enter a long position. I always want to trade in the direction of the trend because if I don't, if I work against the trend, these corrections that take place are oftentimes weaker. So there is more risk involved. So I want to establish first, are we in an uptrend or a downtrend? And one good way of doing it is just to take a look at the higher time frame and to use a moving average. For example, here on this chart, I said, I've got the 200 day moving average from the daily chart. Now, what have I done? I have shown you here various rectangles. These rectangles would for me be a good entry position as far as I've, you know, um, always done it in the past. And that has worked for me very well. And I'm going to explain what I am doing here. So we're going to zoom in a little bit, taking a look at this first example. What I want to see when um, identifying an entry position is that one of the, for example, in this case, the red candle has actually come out of the Bollinger Band and has also closed outside of the Bollinger Band. And the next candle then is snapping back in like a spring. That is what I want to see. Um, that indicates oftentimes a reversal and some traders then want to wait until there is another candle for confirmation. But this is basically a good entry point. And what you can do from here, if you've identified something like that, um, but what you want to avoid is just something like this where the candle doesn't close outside of the Bollinger Band. But this here would be an, a nice entry point. And you can see, Going up here, there could be some nice profits in here from going down from 158 to 240 um, if you if you find the, the top point. But the objective of the Bollinger Bands is actually to, to help you to find a really good entry price, a low entry price, and then you can sell at a higher price. That's the, the plan. Um, and then to do a bit more research here into this, and if it really is a trend reversal, what I recommend, what I always do, is to go now into a lower time frame, for example, the one hour time frame, and identify what is going on, identify more about the price action, just to get a bit more um, of an understanding what is actually happening. And for that, 
we are going to take a look at uh, we need to find we need to find it first where we were and we go to that rectangle and then take a closer look on the one hour chart um, to maybe find some patterns or get a bit more detail about the price action that's actually happening. One, one other thing that you can use in addition, for example, is the RSI, when you maybe see a divergence there or um, just take a look at the candles, how it works. One, one very interesting factor here, especially you can see it on the one hour chart, you can even see more candles here going up. So a very good indication, even a retest of that lower Bollinger Band support level. So very good um, entry point actually. And you can see here that we had a, a long lower shadow of that candle. So that also indicates that the bulls were quite strong. The price was actually already here, but the buyer stepped in and it brought the price up here again. So for me, that would be a good entry point. You could set your um, start trade here, your entry, and then stay as long in there as possible. And as possible exits, um, one way that I've normally used it is just to take a close look at, um, one second, I need to I go back to the four hour chart again. So obviously that would be a, a starting point then, but you also want to find an exit. And um, in terms of exit, there are various ways, obviously. I mean, you could just do the other, the, the, you know, just wait um, until maybe at the top here somewhere, the price will exit the Bollinger Bands again, and then it snaps back in, that would be an exit. Or alternatively, when, for example, the trend is slowing down and there are various ways to do it, for example, using MACD divergence or RSI divergence, and I've made videos on that. So you can use these, for example, to identify turning points and possible exits then. Another possible entry would be here. So you can see here clearly we had it twice actually that the price closed outside, snapped back in, but it didn't really snap back in, but a very, very strong bullish sign here very bullish sign because you can clearly see here that we had a very very long um, lower shadow so and then however that was sort of a, a little bit of a fake um a fake breakout because then you could you saw another um, red candle here and another red candle however then it changed over and you could see the green candle snap back in and then we had a bit of an uptrend here so even not a massive trade but you could have entered here at sort of 150 exited at 185 and in this case um, what happened, the price hit this moving average. So that could also be a possible exit signal. And you could also, with the RSI, you could have seen here that the price action is slowing down. And that would have been a good, um, when the trend is slowing down, you can see it with the price action, just look at the candles, a higher wick, a higher, um, a higher upper shadow here. So indicating that the bears, just, uh, the bulls just couldn't go through here. And that also indicates a trend reversal. But I've talked about that in my videos about trends. Here's another example where candle closed outside, snap back in, nice trade from 116 to maybe up here 177. And that was clear to see that the trend was slowing down, long sideways move, red candle. So yeah, you could have exited there. Let's see if we can find another one. There's another one here, only a smaller one, but again, from down here, the price hit the moving average. That could have been an exit signal from 150 to 167, not massive, but still, or 160, no, from one, 150 to 160. And here again, another signal going out, snapping back in. And um, yeah, some, some people might have exited here or yeah, possibly to take the risk out. Um, but there's another one, another example down here, very clearly snap back out and back in. And I would not, um, if we if we are in a work in a working uptrend, I would not try to, for example, buy up here um, and then short it because there is a bit of a risk. It can work, but still in an uptrend, it is higher risk obviously to work against the trend um, with this strategy. So however, back here, yeah, there was another example here going out, snapping back in. I'll just zoom in a little bit. You can clearly see that go out, snap back in. And then if had you been, had you stayed in the trade, that could have been a really, really healthy trend, a really healthy um, entry from down here to really up here from somewhere around $1 to yeah, pretty much $3 where we are now. So this is pretty much how the Bollinger Band entry strategy can work. Um, it is really a very nice strategy. I wouldn't use Bollinger Bands on their own, but I showed you that you can use to support, you can use to identify the the direction of the trend, you can use the moving average from a higher time frame. Um, sometimes the 200 works well. 
For example, in this case, we have a very volatile asset, for example, Cardano, cryptocurrency, sometimes the 50 day works from a higher time frame. Just a little bit of trial and error. You need to have an understanding of looking at the past history of the price, which moving average from the higher time frame might work. Um, also, in combination with the Bollinger Bands, the RSI might work to identify slowing trends. You know, when you have had your entry to identify when to exit, you could use the RSI to support or the MACD, for example, but also the ADX. And I've made videos about all of these. So um, that is one possible strategy of how to use the Bollinger Bands. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please smash the like button. And if you want to follow me on this journey, then please subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.